Hey everybody, it's Scott Mitchell here with InMotion Hosting and welcome to another edition of Community Q&A. Now, this episode's question comes from Vanessa and she says, I'm getting started with the Drupal program, but I want to start with the newest upcoming version. The Softaculous program doesn't have that version to install into my hosting account, so how can I get this installed into my hosting account? All right, so this week, Vanessa, we're going to go over just that, how to install Drupal 8 manually into your hosting account. So installing anything manually is going to be a little bit more involved than using the Softaculous installer tool. Softaculous installer tool just kind of does everything behind the scenes, makes it nice and easy for you. So if the program you're looking for is not in Softaculous, or if it's in a version like a beta version, an alpha version, just something that's not a solid release, you're not going to find it those in, in Softaculous. You're going to need to do a manual install. Um, in this case, we're doing a manual install of Drupal 8, which is still in beta. And you may want to do a beta version or install a beta version if you are an early adopter or you just want to play around with it, get used to it before it comes out. You know, uh, maybe you're testing it for somebody. Uh, you can, whatever reason, it's fine. Beta versions are not typically recommended for live sites because things can change before the final release comes out and there could be bugs in it and stuff like that. That's why they're still in beta. But if you're brave enough, that's not a problem. Okay, the first thing we're going to do though is make a database. Okay, a database is for our uh, for Drupal. So we're going to go down here. Uh, there's not one here, so we're going to call this Drupal 8. Now this is going to kind of make a shell. There's nothing really going to be in it yet. That all happens when we actually install the program. Okay, we have the database here, but we need a user for it. So go down here and add a user. And give it the same name just to make things easier. Okay, I guess I'll say password here. Make sure it's fairly strong. Create that user. Okay. Okay, so now we need to attach the user to the database. See, he's not there yet. So we go down here, add user to database. It's kind of pre-filled for me since it's the only database and user I have. Click add. Now since this user is going to need to do everything for Drupal, you're going to give it all privileges. Okay, easy enough. We can go back. And now this database has the user. Okay, again, still very small. There's nothing there. It's just a shell. Okay, so go back to your home. If you haven't done it already, you're going to need to download the Drupal files. Okay. Now, if you go to Drupal, drupal.org slash node slash 3060 slash release, shows all the releases for Drupal core. Drupal core is the main program. Uh, the most recent is going to be up top. We have Drupal 8 beta 6 here. And you can even find all old versions, beta 4, Drupal 7.34, which was released in last year even, um, just to tidy up 7. So it's probably the last release 7 is going to have. But if you want to do that one, you can pick that there too. Uh, but we're going for beta 6 here. Pick uh, either one of these will work on our servers. Uh, I picked the zip file for mine. Just out of habit more than anything else. All right, download that to your computer. Remember where you downloaded it because you're going to need to know exactly where it is. Uh, I went to the downloads folder for me. So if I go back to the cPanel, scroll down here to the file manager. Okay, we're going to go inside. Pick where you're going to upload this thing. Uh, if you're going to upload it into a test folder because you're using your, your domain.com slash test, then make sure you're in that folder. Uh, we're going to use it right here at public HTML, which is the main site. So we're going to pretend it's for our main website here. Um, I've already uploaded it, but you guys are going to go click Upload, choose the file, and then click there and hit Open. Okay? It takes just a little time to upload, so I went ahead and did it beforehand. Okay? Once it's uploaded, right-click on it and hit Extract. Okay? It's actually where you want to extract it. Again, I'm going to stick with my public HTML folder and extract my files. All right, once it's finished, you're going to do a reload on your site here. Okay, so it tells me everything's here. It's inflating and creating. Um, actually, it already did it. You reload if it doesn't show up, but it should show a folder with the same 
name as the zip file. Now, it put it in a folder, but we're gonna move that in just a second. Now, go ahead and highlight all these. Just click on the top one, scroll down to the bottom one, hold the shift key and click again. So it highlights everything. Now you can copy or move these files. Um, I hit copy just in case something goes wrong. I can always delete them later. And all you're gonna do is remove that folder name, okay? And hit copy files, all right? Now, again, you can see we're in the public HTML slash this crazy folder name. So go ahead and hit up one level. It takes us back to public HTML. Now all those folders and files are here. Okay, everything that was in this folder, okay, is in this folder. Plus all the extra stuff I had in there, just the extra, you know, normal folders. Okay, so now if I visit my site, which is the next thing you want to do, going to come to this. This is the Drupal installation page or start or start of the page. Uh, so we start with choose our language. English is good. Save and continue. All right. Standard or minimal. Okay. Uh, this has some pre-configured stuff. I typically pick that because it has some uh, extra stuff you want to look at maybe. Okay. Now you want to get your database configuration set up. Okay. MySQL is a database type that we created earlier. Now remember, I told you the database name uh, and username and everything like before is in that database section. So what you want to do is use your, oops, your cPanel username, underscore, and the name that you gave it, okay? That was the database name. Fortunately, it's also the username. And then a password. Now this is the password that you gave the user. Okay, so hopefully you remember that. All right, now advanced options are here if you like, but this is very common, localhost 3306, especially for our servers, that's correct. So you don't have to worry about those. Hit save and continue. All right, what it's gonna do, it's gonna go set up the database. All right, starts off by installing Drupal creates the database, attaches everything, and then it will should pop back and be all set. So we'll see here. It's going to give us some information at the end that we can customize a little bit. This usually takes roughly about a minute. All right, almost done there. See all the different modules it's installing here. These are the most common modules. That's part of, um, that's why they're called part of the core. Uh, additional modules can be added, uh, but anything that's very, very common uh, is part of the core. And that's why you see those being installed here. You can still turn them off though. All right, and finishing up here. There we go, 100%. All right, now it's just tidying things up. Okay, so we have some things we can configure, and these are things you can always change. Um, so you have the site name, which is usually gonna be your domain name, if it's at slash test or slash whatever, but make sure it says that there. Uh, you may not even want that, just as long as it's installed in the right place. Site email address, this is important. Um, let's see. All right, Get this here. This is for information, uh, registration, like it says, automated emails, anything sent to this address. Okay. Ah, then it says use an address ending in your site's domain to help prevent these emails from being flagged as spam. I haven't created that email address yet. But that's fine, we can go with that. Uh, some places will test the address, the email address first, so you have to put like a real one in there. Uh, those that don't, you can put a fake one in there if you want, you're just gonna miss this email. 
Okay, let's go here. We're going to say site maintenance and account. This is like your admin account. So you can create an admin account here. I'm just going to call it admin. Very common. Uh, I can change it to anything. Administrator, you can change it to Bob, Harry, Fred, Sarah, whatever you feel like as well. Uh, it's better not to have admin, but for administrative purposes here, for demonstration purposes, you got to use that. Okay, put your password in. You're creating a password here, not logging in. So whatever you want the password for admin to be, put that there. All right, it gives uh, information here to make it stronger. You can make use uppercase letters, add punctuation marks, etc. Email address here can be different than up here. Okay, this is just going to be your um, kind of your admin email address. Okay, not specifically for the site, but for the admin user. So this can be different. We'll leave it as the same. All right, set some regional settings. This is going to help with um, time zones and stuff. So we're gonna scroll down, find United States. Uh, we are in the New York time zone, so. All right, and there we go. Uh, check for updates automatically, that's probably a good idea. And receive email notifications, that's probably also a good idea. That's why these are selected pre for you. You can turn them off if you like, but I prefer to keep those on. Oops, on I said. All right, and now we save and continue. And this should be the end here. Again, there we go. Okay, so this is the beginning of the site. It's already logged in. I've got my toolbars up here at the top. These do not show when you're logged out, which I'll show you. But um, the very beginning of the Drupal site it has my site name. This is the first page, which really doesn't have anything official yet. And it's, congratulations, you installed Drupal. That was a Drupal 8 manual install. Not particularly hard. You just gotta remember to create the database shell first, download your files, upload your files, extract your files in the places that you need or want them to be, and then when you visit the site, it kinda runs through a little wizard for you, okay? I'll show you really quick when I click log out. This is what everybody, this is what the world will see. This is what everybody that visits your site is gonna see. Um, and you can log in over here. I log in successfully. Again, comes back up here. I can start editing and I have my toolbars up here to do all that stuff with all the administration with. Okay, so that again was a Drupal 8 manual install. Well, that's it for another episode of Community Q&A. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like it below and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to leave your questions in the comment section so we know what to bring you in future episodes. Thanks and have a great day. Do you know the InMotion Hosting Support Center has thousands of articles, pictures, and video tutorials to help you out with your web hosting questions? It's something for everyone, from beginners to experts. Join our community and sign up with your Facebook or Google Plus for free swag, prizes, and discounts. Visit our support center at InMotionHosting.com support.